So I'm doing a second video this week, um, just because it's something that came up and is kind of, uh, it's valid, like it's just, that's just the way it is. Um, on Sunday, uh, the church that I've worked with for the last two, well I've, I've been going there for four years, it's been my home church, and then two for two years I've worked in their prayer team. I got kicked off the prayer team on Sunday because I uh, because I wasn't part of a community group with this church. Now, you know this is their this is their prerogative. They set this up. You know, on the Wednesday beforehand, it became a, prerequ a requisite for joining the prayer team that I've been a part of for two years. The term asinine, in my personal opinion, really feels like the most appropriate to use in this particular circumstance. And see, the truth of the matter is, is that my first thought when they booted me was, Oh great, another church story, another bad church story, because I've seen a few. You know, I've been, I've been involved in the church more or less since I was, you know, a little kid, since I was about three. So I've been to a lot of churches, and I've seen a lot of people get hurt. More than that, I've seen a lot of churches break down. Um, I remember one church at, when I used to live in Minnesota, back in Cotton. Oh my gosh. The, I was, the pastor's son was my best friend, so I used to hang out with him a lot. And I'll never forget the day that the pastor, everything, the whole church fell apart. The pastor decided to use God in order to get into the pants of his secretary. He came to her. Both were married. You know, he was married to his wife, had two kids. She was married to her husband. I think they had one, but I'm not, I don't remember quite. Anyway... And the thing with it was, was, you know, he, he came to her and was just like, you know, I really feel like God wants us to be together. And, you know, she so honored this pastor, so believed in him, that she went with it. They had an affair. They both lost their mutual spouses. Um, or individual spouses, sorry. And lo and behold, you know, they the whole church fell apart as a result. And every a lot of people lost their faith in God. And it's I wish that that would be the only story. Like, that's pretty bad, but I, there are more. You know, there are other churches that I've been part of. Church groups, Bible studies, things like that. It just goes on and on and on. And I always find myself wondering at the end of this, you know, what's the point? Why do we do this? And see, the funny thing is that I know I'm not the only one. I hear, I, you know, I go through YouTube comment sections, I go through Facebook, I go through all these different avenues of social media. And while the truth is, is that, you know, there are a lot of trolls and things like that, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who have experiences that they share and legitimate reasons to be upset with the church. And my question, you know, I ultimately come to is, you know, why? Why is it that the house of God has become a house of pain? Why is it that everyone has to, that so many people have been hurt by this? Why is it that so many have walked away angry, suffering, frustrated? And there's so much, there's so much hate towards God about this. It's like, it's like one of the biggest and most horrific wounds and nobody's touching it it's an infection spreading through the body killing it one piece by piece and nobody's touching it nobody's doing anything with it they just pretend they blame everything else in the world on oh, it's like it's like having a it's like an infection, and you're trying to cure it by eating differently, or by wearing different clothes. Or maybe if you change your bandages, that'll help. 
please don't put antibiotics on it because that would be wrong. See, the truth of the matter is, is that I, you know, it frustrates me. And a lot of the time, like in my, you know, over the course of years working with the church in various degrees, there are a lot of occasions where I find myself wondering why the heck I'm doing it. I mean, it really does get old. Between the people and between the churches themselves, it's just, it's so frustrating. So what's the point? Why do it? Well, the answer is really simple. See, the truth of the matter is, is that the people in the church don't really have a lot to do with God. I know that seems like a, uh, that seems like kind of a weird statement to make. I mean, they're supposedly all Christian, but truth be told, not a lot of people are Christian. See, a lot of the so-called Christians that run around and say they are Christians, to be a Christian, you have to follow Jesus. And I think I made a point of it in another video about, you know, a lot of people want to be saved. They don't want to follow. And that's one of the biggest stigmas here, is that a lot of people includes leadership. And unfortunately, everybody that goes to church these days, they honor, they worship these pastors. They worship the leadership. And see, the frustrating thing about that is half the time, the leadership, they couldn't tell God from a tree, a rock, or a toad. It's a frustrating reality. A lot of them, and yeah, I mean, a lot of pastors will jump up and say, Oh, I know Jesus, I'm saved. It's BS. It really is. To be, like, to be brutally honest, uh, some of them have never even felt the Holy Spirit. I... I saw a video, or no, it was an article on a guy uh, from the Seventh-day Adventist Church who, you know, he tr decided to try atheism for a little while. You know, he came back, he was a pastor, he came back to the church and was like, you know what, I don't really believe in God anymore. I really don't. And see, the funny thing is, is during his this little course of action, you know, the church had brushed him aside, they, you know, fired him, all these other things had gone wrong. And lo and behold, and weirdly, he didn't believe in God after. It was all said and done. But see, personally, I don't think he ever knew God in the first place. I really don't. In fact, I don't know a lot of pastors that know God. I know a lot of people who call it, who say they do. But I mean, when I talk about knowing God, I mean like, can you tell me anything about him? Anything that's not in the Bible? Maybe like his favorite color? I mean, you can find backing for all this stuff. You know, what's he like to talk to? Does he make jokes? See, the trouble with knowing God versus believing in God, and it's the distinction that I feel is important to make here, is that there's a level of relationship. See, the reason why I continue to work with the church, even though it kills me, I mean, I walked away from church on Sunday literally heartbroken. Very literally. And it continued on to the next day. I mean, it, it sucked. And the, ir the pitiful thing about it is that I'll go back, maybe not to that church, but I'll continue my work. Because the truth of the matter is, is that sometimes, sometimes people make mistakes. And in this case, I think they made a big mistake. Um, not, not for kicking me out or whatever, but for what, the reasons why, and for the collateral damage that that has caused. Because I'm not the only one who's kind of suffered that, in that regard. Anyway, the, the point is, is that with regards to this, you know, the reason why I carry on is because I know God, and I know how important all of you are to Him. Everyone. He loves the Buddhists, the Satanists, the Christians, everyone. And he wants them all.
in heaven. But it's a choice thing, see. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are going to choose no. And that's just kind of the grim reality of it. So we live for the ones who will say yes. And to change the atmosphere from one where people idolize a pastor. I mean... And change it to one, an atmosphere where they idolize a god. A real, tangible god who they can talk to interact with and understand. Well, understand's a little difficult, but he'll reach out, he'll meet you where you're at. And see, a lot of thing to understand is that, you know, I make the distinction about knowing God versus believing in God, because a lot of pastors, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians are fans. You know, they, they want stuff from him, they want to like him, but the truth is that they don't know him even though it's pretty easy to reach. It's kind of, you know, that whole omnipotent, omnipresence thing. So, the point of this video that I wanted to address is that, you know, for all the hurts and for whatever you've suffered, understand two things. Number one, God does not give up on you. He never has, and he never will. Number two, number two, Well, I mean, there is the end point with the lake of fire, but that's a whole other thing. In your lifetime, he won't give up to you, or on you. The second thing, though, is stop blaming God for people for the mistakes of people that he doesn't know. You know, Jesus had very distinctive words in Matthew 7 about that. There were people who would come and be, you know, healers and prophets and things like that, and they wouldn't know God. He wouldn't know them. They would use his name, they'd do things, but they wouldn't be saved, because they never followed him. And it's a very, very important distinction to make, is that you're knowing God instead of believing in him, instead of just believing in him. And I know that I'm, I know that that's going to be a hard one to catch on to, because it's kind of a it almost feels like a, a it's a different spin on church language because God specific, Jesus specifically says believe in me but when he said believe there was an intent of accepting as truth in order to accept something as truth you have to know it and I hope that you understand where I'm coming from when I say know God instead of believing in him because our version of the word belief is very different from the one that Jesus said so Take that for what it is. And also, like kind of as an additional side, an amendum to this, you know, do think about it. If you got hurt by a church, maybe there were things they didn't understand, maybe there were things that you were doing wrong too. Usually they're bad, there's bad on both sides. I know I've been guilty of that in the past. I've been hurt by churches in the past where I was making mistakes and I didn't want to see them. But on the other hand, there have been instances where I was just kind of the victim. And I've seen a lot of people where they've just kind of been the victim. So, think about it. Check your heart. Then after you, uh, if you realize that you were in fact in the right, then be pissed off. But let it go. You know, don't hold it on them. They don't know. They just don't know. You can't be angry. You can't be angry at a two year old for not being able to perform calculus or be a good counselor when you need help. And in a lot of cases, that's what you're getting. There are good people, there are good pastors, not every church is like that, but man, there are a lot of them. Anyway, so, just something that I hope helps.